Welcome to Electro Online. One of the aspects of these, the general theory of relativity is almost beyond belief. Now imagine that you have a mixer at home. You put your mixer into, let's say, a, you're trying to make a smoothie or you're trying to mix ice cream or something like that. You put it in there, it swirls around, and the whole mixture swirls around because of the rotating blades. Well, that's not all that different from what happens in space. Amazingly enough, when objects rotate on their axis or two objects revolve around one another, they drag the space around them with them. There's this swirling and dragging effect. Well, that's called the relativistic frame dragging, and it can actually be measured. We can actually calculate how much that would be, how much space is affected by that, and then we go and measure it, and it turns out our measured values are actually quite close to the predicted values. So here, for example, let's say you have a planet or a star or something that's rotating on its axis, space around it gets dragged. So the space on the surface gets dragged the most, and as you go farther and farther away from the surface of the planet, the dragging becomes less and less. Just like when you take a ball and you put it in water and you swirl around, the water will then swirl around the ball. Space does exactly the same thing. For example, let's say I have two objects, two stars that are revolving around another in a bi binary star system. They will drag space along with them as they revolve around the bare center. And what's even more amazing is let's say you have a star or a galaxy. The light passes past another object that rotates on its axis, for example, in such a way that on one side, space is dragged in this direction, on the other side space is dragged in this direction, and when the light of the source then goes around this object, the swirling object, here the light has to travel against the motion of space in this direction, here the light travels with the motion of space in this direction, and it turns out that the speed of the light is actually affected by that swirling motion. So there's actually a principle there where light traveling in space that's being swirled around Light will travel slower when it goes against the current and faster when it goes with the current, and we can measure that difference. So, we came up with an experiment. It's called the Gravity Pro B experiment. And on it, on the satellite that we send to fly around the Earth, do satellites fly? I guess they do. They fly around the Earth, and they had gyroscopes on those satellites that were the absolute most precise gyroscopes we could build. Very, very accurate, precise gyroscopes. And as they went around the Earth, they actually picked up the effect of the swirling motion of space. Now, we have two effects. One is what they call the geodetic drift, and that's caused by simply the warping of space. And that's very easy to measure, and the amount is very large. Notice, minus 6601.8 MAS. MAS stands for milli arc seconds. Now an arc second is 13,600 of, of a degree and a milli arc second is 11,000 of that. So it's of course we're not talking about big numbers but that's still a sizable amount. This is almost seven arc seconds per year of, of shift because of the gravitational effect of having the earth in space. This is the measured value, this is the predicted value, this is a very well-known quantity, it's easy to measure. We already know that space is warped and we can very easily measure that warping. Matter of fact, we'd come up with very careful calculations that we use on GPS to deal with that kind of effect. But in addition to that, we have frame dragging. And frame dragging was, is measured to be at minus 37.2 milli arc seconds per year. Now that's a very small amount. It's not like space is just swirling around like crazy. It's a very minor thing, but it's measurable. It's predicted and measurable due to the theory. And it turns out that the predicted value is not all that different from the measured value. We've come to within about 5% and even less from the predicted value to measuring that with very accurate gyroscopes. So it's something we can actually measure. It's predicted by the general theory of relativity. It turns out space actually swirls around rotating and revolving objects. Imagine that. Space is this entity that's not just sitting there, and galaxies are expanding as space is expanding, but space also causes gravity waves, or gravitational waves as we call them. It also causes swirling around rotating objects. Imagine that. Yes, that's what space is, and it's all predicted by the concept the theory, which is now, of course, well proven by every experiment, you can imagine that the general theory of relativity is real and measurable. And there it is. So when did they discover this? 
Well, they've predicted it already for a very long time, but they haven't been able to measure it. This particular experiment, I think, started in around 2004 or so. So within the last 20 years, they've been able to measure the effects of the swirling of space. So when did they know about it? Well, they've predicted it already probably for close to 100 years. It's called frame dragging, and it actually, it actually exists. Space is this living, breathing thing. I don't know. It's not living and breathing, of course, but it, it acts like a fluid in a way. It's, it's interesting enough.